Hey, Bitcoin Radio, what's up? It is your man, Joe Blackburn, fresh off WCC. You probably already heard a couple of the podcasts I've done since then. I had an amazing time, and I've got you know pretty special guest with us today, and we'll get to him in a second. But hey, look, I, I want to encourage everybody, if you have yet to make a conference, or if you're not sure if you want to make a conference, let it be known you don't get to meet awesome people like I got to meet at WCC, specifically with Litecoin Foundation, but the whole conference was just jam-packed full of awesome. I mean, Vegas Blockchain Week killed it. Like I loved it. Now, I mean, you could you could say what's relative. I'm a social guy, so I like the social experiences. Meeting, engaging, and learning about people is one of my favorite things outside of crypto and inside of crypto that I've ever done in my life. It's just been who I've been from the very beginning. And now I get to sit down, kick back, put up my feet and just chill out with the one and only bodyguard of Mr. Charlie Lee, Litecoin creator and founder, Mr. John Kim. What's up? Welcome to the show, man. Yo! Yo. What's Black up, bro? 77 here. What an honor it is to be able to come on this show. I met Joe and I knew right away we are cut from the same cloth. That and we are, my friend. I, I, I just love the energy that he brought. And, you know, so many people bring energy but it's got the wrong spirit. But uh, when I met you, I knew you, you, you were a great guy and um, you, you had some good value system within yourself. So I'm, I'm so glad to be on your show. Bro, it means a lot, dude. Well, it goes both ways because I know that you're the gatekeeper to one of the most important figureheads in all of cryptocurrency right now, right? And that's Charlie Lee. And, uh, you know, obviously he he trusts you. And obviously, you know, you trust that Litecoin and the Litecoin Foundation are doing awesome things for you to even want to be there. But ultimately, you have to have a really good perspective on what people's intentions are. And I thought that was so cool. Like between you and David Schwartz, who, who I've had on before, obviously, you know, and who introduced me and you, you know, that's a y'all are a great tandem, man. That's a great crew. Not just y'all two. That every everybody from that whole that whole uh, the Litecoin Foundation itself, but the the Litecoin Summit was incredible, man. I just got to commend the whole group before we even get started, dude. How do you feel? Was it a success or what? I I thought it was two times better than last year, and last year was was awesome. And yes. um, but I I just I just feel bad because um, I didn't really uh, put in the time and the energy to set up the conference. So David Schwartz, Alan Austin, like Andrew Yang and all these people from the Litecoin Foundation put in so much time and effort. And I told Charlie, I was like, man, I feel so bad because at the, at the summit, I feel like I got too much attention. But what's the people that are really putting in the effort and energy usually never gets the attention that they deserve. So yeah, it was a, it was a really awesome summit. It looked great. We had the, I think we had diverse. Uh, speakers that were from so many different places. And we had Ron Paul there. Oh I mean, gosh, it was yes. a dream come true. It was a dream come true to meet that guy. No, he's one of my heroes as well. And so I, I definitely relate to that. I, I love that you guys had Landon Castle, NASCAR uh, driver. You had CJ Sapong. I mean, one of the top goal scorers in all of MLS. And I got to meet both of them. I got to, I got to interview uh, Landon and I've already established a relationship with CJ to make sure that he comes on at some point. And, you know, I, I think that we have a really cool and unique way of, uh, of how we're going to address, you know, what, what he finds so near and dear to him. But it just goes to show these people didn't just randomly show up, right? Like you guys have established yourselves. And as you said, you know, there's plenty of people. And hey, look, I got to meet Andrew Yang too. And unfortunately, to many people who might be disappointed in what you initially hear, it was not the 2020 candidate, Andrew Yang. But it was a guy that looked like him and was really freaking awesome. And I mean, dude, he walked in, he had his Andrew Yang hat on, right? And he had this 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 scarf. And I mean, I'm like, hey, man, what's going on, dude? I like I like your setup, bro. He was like, yeah, I'm Andrew Yang. And I just kind of laugh like, oh, yeah, I feel you, bro. I don't know if just because you're Asian, you're like trying to play it off, which would be cool. And he was like, no, my name is literally Andrew Yang. He pulled out his wallet, showed me his ID. He goes, I'm Andrew Yang. I'm like, oh, holy <laughs> crap. Okay, my bad, dude. Yeah, like I wasn't trying to be. No, he was like, oh, dude, I'm just I'm just having fun with it. I do this every day. I'm like, that was really cool, bro. Like, I get it. That was really awesome. And so obviously uh, the, the team is, is uh, just top notch. And I've been really proud to be able to get to meet some of you guys. Uh, probably not everybody. I did get to run in Charlie Lee. You guys were walking out one day. And, you know, fortunately, the very first day I met you, you promised me this really awesome interview. And then it was me who messed up. But it was fun to actually grab a hold of you, pull you in and be like, let's do this. And then that's when I messed up. Nevertheless, we got you now, man. So tell me, outside, okay, so success, it was awesome, it was great. What were some of the key events? What were some things that stick out the most besides, you know, obviously Ron Paul you know, and meeting, and meeting me? <laughs> meeting you was, was the highlight. That a boy? Good, man. <laughs> right, keep talking. 
you know, I left, I left my uh, Dallas. I, le- I sold my house and sold my businesses, and I left in my Litecoin truck um, in in August 6, two thousand eighteen. And when I left, I was a nobody, you know. And sure. but I just wanted to prove to the world that action speaks louder than words. And instead of arguing on Twitter, I thought that somebody needed to get their butt up and and go out into the real world and see what's really going on instead of you know theorizing uh what what could be happening in the world so but when i did that we started a a team called litecoin east coast team when i met them i told them like there will be a day when when you guys are all going to be on a stage at a conference you know and at, at that time i'm sure nobody believed me but i'm one of those people that i i, I speak into the world and it keeps me accountable to make it happen so the highlight of that summit was at the end i brought everybody up and and they were actually on on the stage with me and and to be able to highlight who they were and what, what they what they did behind the scenes to me that was um my proudest moment because um i wouldn't be where i'm at today without those guys helping me sure. And, and, you know, taking care of me. So um, for me, that was a very emotional moment that after a year, a year and two months later, I was able to keep my promise to them. No, that, dude, I can see and I can hear the, the, the passion and the appreciation in your voice when you tell that story. And, you know, you kind of have a really unique path to where you are. And we, we got a brief chance to discuss a little bit about this uh, while we we're at the conference. But, you know, it's it's really it's inspiring to me because what you just said about you literally you sold your house, you loaded up in your Litecoin truck and you made this happen. And one of the really cool ways that you spoke that life, as as you just noted, you spoke life into what you want to be was you said you're, I mean, you used to, without ever knowing Charlie or really anybody attached to the project outside of, you know, Twitter, maybe following somebody, you called yourself Charlie Lee's bodyguard. And yeah. this was, you were not Charlie Lee's bodyguard. You, yeah. In fact, you were everything probably but Charlie Lee's bodyguard. And anybody else might even seen that as like, uh oh, what is this guy about to do? Right. It could be a little bit crazy. Cause I mean, let's be honest. John, when I first met you, you're like, you're a little crazy. You're kind of awesome, right? But in the wrong <laughs> context, that could maybe be seen a little bit differently, right? And of course, I mean that in an endearment because I think nothing but the world of you. Uh, but tell us that that story about how you actually got to where you are today. Well, you know, uh, I got on Twitter 2009 because somebody made me, but I never used yep. it until 2018. In the beginning of 2018, I started going on Twitter because uh there was two reasons. I heard that a lot of crypto people were there. And number two, I don't have a high school diploma or college degree, so I don't know how to write. I don't know where the commas go. I I'm not, I'm not really good. Twitter so, <laughs> don't matter. Yeah, you're, you're the perfect company. No, but I wanted to force myself to write in public and, and sure. be corrected so that I can learn from correction. So th- those are my two main motives. And, and I just, I just, w- I just love Charlie Lee and what he stood for. So. Uh, I changed my name to Satoshi Lights Bodyguard on Twitter. I just kept bugging him, and he finally followed me. And then one day I got drunk, and um, <laughs> I direct messaged him. And, and th- th- I mean, this is what I said. I said, look, I, I don't have a high school diploma. I don't have a college degree. I'm not a developer. I'm not a coder. I don't know how in any way, shape, or form I can help you. But if you give me one chance, I will find a way and I will not let you down and I will make you proud. And um, I told him about my history, you know, just my bad history and, and stuff like that. I just wanted to come clean. And he said, you know what, you got it. And then he invited me to Litecoin Foundation. And then I started volunteering wow. for them. And then on September of last year at the Litecoin Summit 2018, I, I became Charlie's physical bodyguard. So, Bro, congratulations. Yeah. Like seriously, and, John, and, and that's when, amazing. And when when I became his bodyguard, he told me, "I need. I think you should change your Twitter handle now because you you've accomplished your goal." So I changed my name to Chief Litecoin Evangelist to the World, which is not a title, but it's my next goal. So every time mm-hmm. I'm on Twitter, I'm reminded that I need to keep pushing in order for me to make that a reality. 
Uh, and you're well on your way, John, because, you know, the way that you, you carry yourself and the way that you hold yourself, even when I first met you, you know, it's clear that you that this matters to you. Right. Like it, it feels like it's part of you. And I, I really want to um, make sure that you see even from somebody like myself who interacts and deals with a lot of people throughout the space who believe they are or they want to be. You embody this. You are part of this Litecoin journey, and you—I I can't even give you so much enough enough props for that story because you know, even for for a lot of people that I know that have gone through one way or the next a similar or relative situation where they came out of nothing, you know, and they became something. It all started with nothing's going to stop me. I really want to. I really want to do this, and you know, everything that you've even said since you've been on here has has, has been. I wanted this. I made it happen because I didn't stop. And you got drunk and you let Charlie Lee know, I want to be part of this. And he said, yes. And not only that, you are an active and huge part of this now, man. Like when I promise you this, anywhere I know Litecoin is going to be, I'm going to be looking for you now, right? You and David Schwartz both. I will be looking for you because I want to hang out with you because you're one of the coolest dudes I've ever met in crypto, bro. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, I always say, I always say passion is married to obsession. It gives birth to determination. So uh, I'm an all in or all out type of guy, you know. So for me, uh, Litecoin, I didn't choose Litecoin. Litecoin chose me. I always say you don't choose passion. Passion chooses you. And it takes you to a place where you can't go without it. So for me, this is an obsession of mine to, to make sure that, that the future generation, my kids, your kids, will not be a debt slave anymore. You know, that, that being in debt has become normalized to where everybody is – is okay with it, you know? So um, I'm looking at a future where more people will be responsible with their money and to be able to be their own bank and, and take their privacy and take their money seriously, you know? So um, that being said, um, you know, I fell for it too, you know, getting in debt and staying in debt. And, and, and that's the whole point of the banks, right? It's to get you in debt, keep you in debt. And I call it the modern day slavery. Just because they don't have you physically, um, I don't know if you read the Bible. I don't. I don't get really religious, but if you owe somebody money, you're 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 his slave, right? So it's it's brilliant how this this economy that they created was that they they can steal from you without reaching into your pocket and not touching you physically. So, so true. Yeah, I just wanted to set people free, and and some people may doubt me, right? Some people say, you know what, everybody says they want to unbank the bank. I mean, bank the unbanked and they, they care about the little people. Well, you know, I can say that action speaks louder than words. So uh, three years of my life, I served the homeless, homeless uh, people of Dallas. I started with one person with a tent and we ended up feeding thousands of people per week. Wow. And I didn't have, I didn't make any money. I didn't start a foundation. I did not receive any donations for three years. I did that because I wanted to know how it felt to be homeless. I even went into the homeless shelter and lived there for a couple of months just to just to understand how they felt. And, and and the difference was that I didn't need to go into the homeless shelter. I wanted to go to the homeless shelter just to see how it felt to live there. So I I refuse in, in the world that we live in, I refuse to talk about anything that I'm not living. I, I refuse to talk about anything that I'm not practicing. So right now, because of all this crazy, I'm going out and I don't have a home, whatever, but, and my family has suffered, right? My marriage has suffered. So you will never hear me talk about it, marriage advice or family advice, mm -hmm. because right now I'm not practicing that to the best of my ability. So uh, if everybody in this world were just to talk about what they were actually practicing, it would be a better world. Oh, wow. It, it, I can't it, even imagine, right? Yeah. Right. Uh, again, I commend you so much, John. Like that's those are really powerful stories and uh, and life experiences, and it really does put put real life into perspective. And you know, sometimes we lose that in crypto, right? And sometimes we lose what that that the end goal actually is. And I was having this discussion with uh, with Jim on the podcast that I did before. Like, you know, someone challenged me this this week, and they they said. You know, Joe, what's your what's your goal, right? What's your goal with Bitcoin Radio? Because you know, it's 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 still trying. I'm tr still trying to figure this out, John. Right? I mean, like, I know there's certain things I do well. I know there's certain things I like to do. I know certain things I don't like to do, right? But I still might have to do them because it's it's accepted or this is what it's is is what it takes to to grab a hold of the audience or whatever it might be. But I know for a fact that I like doing this as a whole, right? But someone said, Joe, what's your goal with Bitcoin Radio? Like, what are you what, what are you going to see come out of this? You know. 
And I, you know, as I kind of sat there and, you know, I kind of have this already like, you know, pre-established idea that I like to, you know, tell people and, and kind of, you know, reiterate this part and, and maybe make a statement about that. They asked me, they said, well, how much of it is, is, is it making money? Right. And I'm like, you know what? Honestly, that's a that's a pretty big part of it at this point, even though I'm not making any right now. I mean, long term, I wouldn't be wasting my time, you know, if I knew for a fact that I was going to make zero dollars from this at some point. Right. I mean, like at some point, it's got to make sense. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, anybody who's going to commit to anything needs to see some sort of end goal. And that includes being able to pay your bills. Right. It's a responsible thing to do to do anything and not be able to pay your bills would be irresponsible for you and your family. And I myself have a family. So, uh, of course, I, I can recognize those things. But there is a certain level of appreciation I have for what crypto and Bitcoin and, and blockchain can do that is a overwhelmingly strong majority of, of what I'm trying to do at this very moment, right? I have no intentions of making a dollar tomorrow. Now, I'm not against it, but you know that's not the plan that me, Mouse Belt, Patrick have put in place. You know, We said we can wait a certain amount of time before we start taking sponsors because we want to really align. And, and, and more importantly, we want to put ourselves in a position to be ex have the exposure in the necessary types of conversations with people to make sure that we supplant ourselves as that. And we're not rushing around begging to make money. And we're really fortunate that mouse belt's been able to put us in a position for that to happen. Uh, Patrick, especially that's the, uh, that's the um, co-founder and, and the CEO of mouse belt, who the, is the parent company of Bitcoin radio. Now, sorry, I don't mean to be long winded here, John, no, I'm, tying, I'm tying this in somewhere. Right. And that is, you know, the one thing I can say about you, Litecoin foundation, mm -hmm. David Schwartz, even Charlie Lee, you know, Charlie's not sitting there making money off his, off his Litecoin every day, right? He's not sitting there minting new Litecoins for himself. Charlie is, is actively supporting his product and his, and his creation, but it's decentralized. He doesn't own it. He's not the CEO and he never will own it, nor, nor will he be the CEO because Litecoin can't. But what they do have is they have a tremendous support system and community around them. And that's what it takes to succeed in this space is to prove it. And then, you know, while you're, while you're proving it, these people are going to believe in you. And there's not a single product or project in this entire space to include Bitcoin who has the means, the community, and the actual vision to complete something. And that starts in, it, it's no surprise of what the stories you just told me that you're successful today. And that's a relative term anyways. But the success you're having today is a direct reflection of the people that are around you and who you want around you. Right. And you just nailed that, dude. And again, I mean, I could sit here and just say thank you and great job the whole time. But I mean, that gets boring. But thank you. You're doing a great job. But I, I you know, I, I always say this, right? Money is important. But if you're led by money, sooner or later, you're going to make compromises to your character and your value system. But but if you're led by passion and conviction, sooner or later, the world will come looking for you because you you are different from majority of the people who are money hungry. So. I never downplay how important money is, but in, in the big scheme of things, you know, I always say trust will be the biggest asset in five years. And wow, and, wow, and if you, powerful, John. Yeah. I like it. So if I'm long term hold, holding Bitcoin and Litecoin, I'm long term holding on my character as well because I wanted to reflect what I represent. And what I represent, Bitcoin and Litecoin, is called a truth protocol. It's transparent. It's open source. It's public. It's 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 everything that that I hold dear and I try my best every day when I represent Litecoin to to remember what Bitcoin and Litecoin stands for. And I have if I truly believe in what Bitcoin and Litecoin can do for this world, exposing the manipulation and corruption of the money um, monetary system, I have to be in some way affected deep within my heart that I have to carry myself in a transparent and authentic and truthful way. Because if I, if I don't, that is uh, a reflection of, yep. of if I'm in it for the money or if I'm in it to really, uh, you know, change the world. You know, I was looking at your Twitter um, after I met you, right? And I, I'm not a big Twitter guy. I have a Twitter and similar to you, like I had actually got a Twitter back in 2000, I think nine, I think it was the year that it started, but I just never really participated in it. And I've been on Facebook since 2004, I think. So since the very beginning. So that's been a lot easier for me to just stick with, right? That's where my community is. That's where I got my start in crypto uh, on a social level, at least. And, you know, I have a lot of appreciation for the, the people that I've learned and met and, uh, and get, become family with on uh, from, from Facebook. Now, that being said, 
you know, you've you've kind of turned the corner recently. You've gotten really social. You're constantly posting some really cool stuff. If you're not following him, he is I am John Kim 77. And it's a it's a really interesting and fun. And I loved how you walked up with Charlie to the cashier they on one of those videos recently. And you're like, uh, hey, we went up here and we asked if you took Litecoin. You're like, no, but I do own it. And then, you know, Charlie was there with you and he and obviously you'd introduce, you know, that this I mean, how how cool would that be for to be that that chick, you know, like to, to be sitting there, you know, have that opportunity to meet Charlie in that capacity. Obviously, she wasn't the owner, so she couldn't just like change it. But, you know, but that's just a little snippet of the type of content and the type of things that you're putting on your on your Twitter that I think was so intriguing, so honest and so like, you know, it's that genuine, real, authentic, reactionary type of uh, of of just interaction that you have. And it, it, it embodies what you're trying to be for Charlie and for for Litecoin and, and what you're trying to do for the community. Uh, dude, you've nailed it. Now, let me ask you something, John. What have been some of the bigger or better things that have come out of this? Like, what are some of the like the monumental or funny or just like the thing, the moments that that you remember over the time? Because I mean, it's only been like a year and a half, right? Yeah. Well, the, there has been so many. Uh, th there was time we we our East Coast team and I we took over Times Square, and uh, we, we went up on top of that st steps. And and one of my boy Johnny Litecoin, he he started to like. <laughs> preach in open air about Litecoin and blockchain, why it's needed. And um, wow. people were gathered around and they were kind of like listening to what we were talking about. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And then, hey. go ahead. Go ahead. And then just going into car dealerships and getting Subaru, the, the biggest Subaru dealer in, in the United States to accept Litecoin as payment and using Twitter as, as, as the main ingredient to get that deal done. Sure. Um, Powerful. Because I did a two minute video of that dealership and I put it up on Twitter and within two, three days, it had 300,000 impressions. Wow. So I, w I went into that room with uh, Charles Davis, my friend. He was a general manager there in Litecoin Lisa. And I just basically showed them, hey, 300,000 impressions. You still don't want to take Litecoin as payment. So I, I kind of used the marketing to to uh, get that deal done. So it, it was kind of fun. Absolutely. And that kind of goes to the point, you know, John, that I was saying earlier about how you, there's there's just so many different ingredients that Litecoin has that can push, you know, cryptocurrency into the actual like, you know, big picture here. And it's something that me and David were talking about when he interviewed with me too, uh, is I'm a huge fan of what you're doing, right? In fact, I don't know if anybody is doing more than the Litecoin Foundation for the progression and the legitimacy of what cryptocurrency needs to be in the future, right? Like, right. It was, it's taking too long. Like you should be able to have your, your, your a part of your, your 401k into, into in Litecoin. And now that's, that's actually happening. And most of that's happening because the Litecoin foundation is putting so much time and effort. And I'm, I don't mean to just only use that because there's plenty of other examples, but where do you see, like, how much longer do you think we're gonna have to wait? Like how close are you guys to figuring this out? Um, you know, just being out in the real life, and being in Asia, I just realized that we, we are kind of far away from, because mm -hmm. when I was on crypto Twitter, I thought it, it was going to happen next year. Sure. But we, we are far away, but you have to understand that, that there's a transition period. Things aren't just going to happen overnight. So it's like um, chipping away at the wood, at the yep. tree, right? Sooner or later, tree. yeah, it's going to fall. And, and, and more people that chips away at it, the faster it's going to fall. So right now what I'm trying to do is build momentum and demand so that people will realize uh, organically that I don't know if the dollar is going to make it, you know, and, and you know, what else are you going to, you know, there's no other thing in this world right now that has the ability to, to change the trajectory of one's life besides crypto. Why? Because they own everything else because yeah. of the decentralized nature of Bitcoin and Litecoin and the governments can't control it, it is the only thing outside of their control. So I say, why don't you own some of that that is outside of their control and see what happens? And plus, it's the best performing asset class in the last decade, in all asset class. So I just, if you're not exposed to a little bit of Bitcoin and Litecoin, I just, I, I I just feel bad for you. <laughs> well, fortunately, you're among friends here. And although this is called Bitcoin Radio, you know, we we do embody the same spirit, you know, of what Litecoin is doing. And, you know, there's there's so much potential, as 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 noted, you know, um, I mean, it just it takes it takes a village. Right. We all have to kind of band together and, you know, no one's going to do it for us. And I get I mean, 
I actually say that Litecoin is doing it for us right now. I mean, the Litecoin Foundation is, and that's it's lacking so much exposure and so much, and it's one of the reasons why I wanted, I really wanted to make sure I had you guys you on. Obviously, I've already had David on, but that was pretty much like Litecoin Summit prior to. We want to talk a little bit about what's going on. You know, I'd like to highlight this this journey that you guys have all been on. Now, let's kind of talk about Charlie for a second. You know, obviously, you've been a fan of his since you got in. You know, and and as you became, you know, part of this team on the East Coast and. You know, you, you put you. I guess you wrapped your truck in Litecoin and um, and some sort of Litecoin decals. Although I have, I didn't even hear that story yet. You might have to tell us about a little bit about that too. But how has Charlie impacted your life on an actual personal level once you got to know him and whatnot? So I got to. I mean, even when I was fighting in the cage, and I had many coaches. I had boxing coach. I had kickboxing coach. I had a jujitsu coach, and all this stuff. And and even in my in my life, you know, I've had some great people in my life with like really great characters. You know. But I must say, of all people that I've ever met, this guy has the highest uh, value system when it comes to ethics and morals. So he he keeps me grounded. And him and David Schwartz both. These guys are sure. like heart. They look at themselves in the mirror and, and, and they try to be as honest as possible. And I think the most important thing for me was to be able to um, glean some of that from Charlie. So... I feel like the more that I spend time with them, there was so much for me to learn. Even though we're the same age, um, I was raised up as this, you know, fighter, sports guy. He was raised up as this computer programmer. And uh, just something. Pair. Yeah. So something about his calmness and his patience and just being in the crypto space since 2011. I mean, he's been through all, all of it, all the roller coasters, you know. And I, I felt like that if I'm next to him, I can learn from the mistakes and the, from the, uh, his experience and be able to move forward in a, in a, in a more positive and more focused way, you know? Sure. So. sure. I mean, I, dude, I remember back in the day, like when I first got in, I got in into 2013, right, right as Bitcoin touched a thousand dollars. And then I sub, uh, like subsequently watched it fall back down to like 250 bucks <laughs> and I was pissed, right? But, you know, even when Litecoin come out, obviously several years before that, I think it was 2011, right, that, that Litecoin started up. You know, I was I, I mean, I remember hearing about it and be like, oh, dude, that's just a copycat. Like like there's that's just someone trying to make money off of what Bitcoin's already done. Stick with Bitcoin. And it's not been an easy, you know, path for Litecoin to kind of assume this second role. Right. This this light this this Litecoin is silver to Bitcoin's gold. And most people still feel that way. I, I love the way that that Litecoin has been able to embody and not compete and still appreciate what Bitcoin's done. What is Charlie's view on that? Like, how does he see Bitcoin? I mean, does he see it as necessary? And how do you feel about that as well? So, and I, and I know you don't want to speak for Charlie. I just, I, th I think it's really interesting to kind of get this perspective. Yeah. So 2011, um, he created Litecoin because he really saw Bitcoin is going to be a store of value like gold. Yep. You know, and even then, I mean, he, he, he used to trade a uh, golden server in the futures market too. So he understood the qualities and the soundness of uh, gold, physical gold and silver. So, you know, when he looked at Bitcoin and Bitcoin code and where it was headed, he knew it was going to be a store of value. So he needed to create uh, something lighter, something faster, you know, but um, yes. he, he made it for fun. But let me tell you a backstory of what happened. There was a, a coin called Tenebricks and Tenebricks was released by an unknown founder, but it had a huge pre-mine. So Charlie was involved in that too. So they, they made another coin called fair bricks <laughs> and it was a uh, uh, trying to make Tenebricks fair. Right. But they they copied the code of Tenebricks, which was very buggy, and it, it never really took off. So what Charlie did was from that experience, he realized that the only way to survive and to bring something great into the crypto space was to be fairly launched like Bitcoin. Sure. And uh, he copied the source code of Bitcoin because why fix something that's not broken? Yep. So it he so Litecoin is. Uh, a lighter version, uh, a faster version of Bitcoin because it's basically the same code. And some people are like, well, he just copy pasted. I'm, and I would say hindsight, right? Right now, every, every update that Bitcoin gets, we get for free. Yeah. The best developer, no yeah, the best developers in the world right now are working on Bitcoin. And every time they update, we get that for free. All we do is you just merge it into Litecoin code. And it becomes the same thing. Beautiful. Yeah. So 
I always say, who's more brilliant than 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 Charlie realizing yeah. the beauty and the power of Bitcoin? And now, eight years later, we have every update. So basically, we have all the Bitcoin developers plus our developers. So yeah. I always say jokingly that Litecoin has the best developers in the world <laughs> because we have the truth. our own, you know. So. It really is. It's the truth, though. And that's a really great story because I was not unfamiliar with the Fairbricks um, aspect of this uh, of this story. You know, and I and I, you know, I oftentimes I remind people, you know, Charlie Lee has been a spokesperson for the space for a very long time. And in in kind of in lieu of the absence of an actual Satoshi. So, I mean, I think it's really, really unique that you get that perspective. And he's, you know, I, I think Vitalik's kind of assumed that torchbearer, you know, role recently. Um, over the last year and a half or so. But I mean, Charlie Lee is still Charlie Lee. And he, it's not like he's out there doing, you know, interviews every single day. He's a very, I don't want to call him private because I don't know him well enough to say that you do, but you know, he's very to himself. I mean, he's very calm about, and you brought, right. you brought that up. Because he's, he hates the spotlight. He's always telling me, please don't talk about me. <laughs> sorry, hey, sorry, Charlie. <laughs> but I, I talk about him from a personal standpoint, right? But his main goal is to remove himself from the spotlight so that so that Litecoin can become more decentralized, right? So, um, yeah, I've never met anyone that that doesn't want attention, but is forced to to be in the spotlight because of who he is. Yeah. But if it was up to him, I don't think uh, I don't think people would ever hear from him because he's. He's a very private guy, you know. Sure. No, and I respect that about. I mean, a lot of developers are that way, though, right? You know, it's not it's not you know uncommon for developers to maybe, and I don't mean this in a negative way whatsoever, but maybe even be like a little socially just anxious and just don't want to deal with the. Yeah, stuff but because- Charlie's different. Here's why: like when I go to conferences and I'm like excited to meet somebody that that I like, I'm not gonna say any names, but I'm very disappointed. Sure. I'm very disappointed when I met him, and, I, and sometimes I say, I wish I, I didn't meet them. Because in my mind on Twitter, there were this, this awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when I met them, I was, I was like, oh my gosh, this is very, very, I, I, I wish I didn't meet him. But Charlie, I mean, he's, he plays hockey. He plays in a league. No he, joke. Yeah, he, he really, yeah, he's okay, cool. When I went to go see him, he scored two times. So I, I, I was joking, like, how much you pay him to let you score two times? Right, right. I, like, <laughs> I mean, he plays hockey and, and he wrestled in high school and, sure. And, He's just, and he does a little bit of jujitsu, you know, and, and he, I, I don't know. He, he's completely different, funny, just very, just a good, fun guy to be around. But I can't say the same for every other developer That's or, true. or I've ever met. So, uh, th- I That's mean, me and, me and me and Charlie click because we, w- w- when we hang out, it's not about business. It's, it's just friendship. Sure. And, and I like having him around and he likes have he's comfortable having me around. So to me, that was that, the, that's great. That was the most important thing because how can you continue a relationship when you don't really like each other, right? Like especially in such a like unique and distinct role as his bodyguard, right, head of yeah. security. Yeah, and he also he also corrects me a lot, but in a in a very smart, intelligent way. Like I walk away, th- I walk away realizing that oh, okay, basically what he just did was tell me something good. And told me what to work on. And I always call him Mr. Miyagi. And I'm like, some, and sometimes he tells me to do something. I'm like, is this one of those wax on, wax off? Oh, go. I'm going to realize after I do it what, what was it for. So he is, he is, I call him the silent ninja. He, he's two steps ahead of everyone and he has a big picture in mind. So he's building and mentoring me into a person that, that is going to be, uh, positive and good for Litecoin. Sure. But um, I'm rough around the edges, so there's going to be a lot of uh, mistakes along the way. <laughs> okay, I think you know, like crypto is still evolving. Where like I think those those types of personalities, John, and you have a really, I mean, like people don't understand. Like they're just getting like a little dab of John Kim. John Kim is a crazy dude. This dude is legit, y'all. Like I can't wait till everybody gets a chance to to hear a little bit more from him. Because obviously, now that we're friends, John, I'd love to have you be more involved in some capacity, even if it's just like a few times a year. If I get a chance to to bring you on, just pick your brain, and get you comfortable. But so Any let's talk about that. You, man. Any time, you know, you're a good looking white dude. Thank I, you, bro. I, you I know you were married. You were very popular with the ladies. No, no, no. In fact, I was uh, I was really dorky, and I was just trying <laughs> to make it right. I, actually, I don't like to answer that question because I think I was like in between, like maybe, but it, it's, I mean, being up 
in front of the camera will make you confident, right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. As we know, like you go in the ring and you're scared. What's going to happen, bro? You won't get your ass kicked, right? No, because I'm from Texas. So I go to like when I was younger, I used to go to a lot of these like country country clubs, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not country club golf, but like dance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And there Hunk were the guys that look like you. That, that that stood in the corner and all the girls went after. So that that's why you're like that sweet home Alabama dude. You kind of look that's like. Right, I'll take it. I'll, I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, I'm originally from Alabama too, by the way. So, oh really? Yeah. Uh, but no. Uh, what to your point? Yes. I mean, like, uh, you know, <laughs> I like I like the way that you know you're you've been able to just grab a hold of this space. So let me let me ask you this: Have you had to protect Charlie yet? Uh no. But my whole life, I've been a fighter, right? So yep. um, I, I smile a lot and, and I, I try, like, I'm very inclusive and I'm, 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 I'm very energetic. What people don't know is, like, they, they do not want to see when my f- switch flips. Sure. From, from, from my eyes to, to my body to everything, I just turn into something that you don't want to be around. So um, I just don't think that I'm hoping that, Time will never come, but if it does, of course. it will end quick. I love it. No, I mean, you got to, and that's, that's, that's your role. Like that's one of the things that, I mean, obviously you were brought in early on, you know, clearly that role is expanding and even Charlie believes that it's, it's, it's expanding with the addition of like, or the, uh, the Litecoin evangelist. Litecoin evangelist. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So even, even which I think is a huge compliment too, John, that even Charlie sees your growth as capable of something more than just someone sitting there making sure he doesn't get punched or kidnapped. Right. I mean, that's cool, dude. Like you're protecting one of the strongest and most important voices in crypto. That's actually a pretty big responsibility, bro. So if you, if for some reason you were to screw that up, you're going to have a lot of mad people. This may sound weird, but in everything passionate that I do, I already factor in the fact that I could die. Sure. Hey, I feel you. And it's I think- not weird to me. I was in the army for seven and a half years. I get it. Yeah, so so I think that's the difference between me and any other person is that people who have because I, I had childhood leukemia, so I, I faced death and and I, and I and I faced death maybe ten times wow. in my life where I, I had a gun pulled to my head and I told him to shoot me. So so for me, it's like everybody's kind of scared of death, but for me, I'm not like happy to die, but like it's not that it's not that it doesn't hold me. It, yeah. it, it doesn't. Wow doesn't you know it doesn't grip me like other people so for me like in in the face of danger i always go forward you know so so i love that yeah so even if even in this crypto space i said to myself when i left i'm nobody now but i'm willing to go so far above and beyond anyone else that when it's all said and done they will not be able to keep up with me you know and in so doing i sacrifice so much of my other life to where all my uh, focus and attention was on this space. But as I grew in this space, my personal life went the other direction, the same rate, you know? So um, I don't want to make myself sound like some, some, some cool guy that did it right, but I'm just an obsessed man that, that goes all in and won't stop until I reach my goal. So, I mean, so, so it, let me ask you this. John, and obviously, you know, there's, there's good, there's bad, there's, there's things that, that probably get you really excited. And there's things obviously that, that you don't want to happen, you know, and, uh, and you're, you're, you're part of Litecoin now. Like I know you, I think of Litecoin foundation. I think of David Schwartz. I think of you. And obviously, uh, first I'll think of, uh, uh, Charlie, you know, but going forward, what do you expect to be like as a unit, as the foundation, like, what do you want the, what do you want to see soon? Like, what is it that really is going to, to be success for you? That, that I can leave. Charlie can leave. David can leave. Wow. And it will continue to go just as strong, you know, so. the whole good point, answer, John. Wow. The, the whole point of decentralization is that, the focus shouldn't be about Charlie, me, or David, or the Litecoin Foundation. Litecoin Foundation is two two and a half years old, but Litecoin has been going hundred percent uptime, zero zero downtime for eight years. Yeah. Five hundred billion dollars, over five hundred billion dollars transacted in its network. So the the Litecoin network was strong before, and it will be strong after me, Charlie, David, Litecoin Foundation. So yeah. the, my goal is to make sure that. 
uh, I always say my, when I go out, I'm, 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 I got a match. I'm lighting people on fire and making little John Kims everywhere. I so love it, dude. I disappear. Another John Kim in, the, in a different name will pop up and do his thing. So ultimate goal is to make sure that decentralization is the most important thing because it's, that's the only thing that's outside of the government's and the business's control that, that I, I ignite the fire in people. And when I walk away, that, that, that little fire would talk, turn into a wildfire and it would be uncontainable. Dude, that might be literally the best answer I've ever received for any question I've ever asked that you could walk away and it stays the same. And that is in regards to decentralization. That's incredible, bro. Like, Hey, cheers. All right. So let me ask you a little personal uh, questions, a few personal questions. Number one is what kind of uh, martial arts and what kind of fighter are you? When I was younger, I, I, I got into, you know, something bad. So I fought a lot sure. street fighting, um, maybe three or four times a week without exaggerating, pr probably more. Cause it was my job to fight back then. Yeah. Uh, I, I was involved in a lot of dumb things, but, uh, <clears throat> but I wasn't a good fighter. I just had, I was, I was, I had balls, you know, I, yeah. I had no fear. So it didn't matter how big you were. I always threw the first punch yep. And in, in, in real life. If you throw the first punch, you're probably going to win 80% of your fight. And I, and That's I knew true. that. So, yeah. so as I, I can, I learned not to fear anything during that time. And then when I started fighting, I learned jujitsu, boxing, kickboxing, a little bit of Muay Thai and wrestling. So when I learned how to fight, I realized that I couldn't fight. <laughs> so so um, yeah, I did all that. I used to train seven hours a day because I had the same, same mindset. Okay. Obsessed. That guy does two hours a day, which means since he's younger than me, I have to put in more work. So I'm yeah. going to do seven hours a day times three and one hour more. Wow. You know? So yeah. that's my mindset in everything that I do. In, in six months, I was able to teach a jujitsu class because I, I put in so much time, you know? So. Sure. So, you know, looking back, you know, on these, on the lessons and the, and the styles that you've been able to practice with jujitsu and, you know, even the street fighting, I mean, do you, do you still enjoy the, the discipline? Do you enjoy the, the, the workout? Like, is this something that you're still actively, obviously you're a bodyguard, so you're, you're perfecting your craft, but do you enjoy this? Like, is this something that you could see long-term? I mean, Charlie Lee's bodyguard jujitsu is kind of a cool name. I would step in and pay for that, you know, opportunity. I mean, like that's, it's, I think it's a really cool brand that you've been able to kind of build around yourself as that bodyguard. I think it changed my life forever because it taught me what it takes to become something that is really difficult. It, it, I literally had, you used to drain my ears every day. I used to go to a pet store, get a small needle and I drain my ears every day. Wow. I used to take 15 ibuprofen just to get up in, in, in the first six months when I was trying to become an athlete, my body was totally against it. So yeah. I used to have bruises all over my body and, and four little dots because they were all grabbing me. So I had four dots of bruises everywhere. So, but well, you just sat there literally getting your ass whipped every day. Man, you know? I've never I mean, that's felt so helpless in my life where I've always beat up people, but when I gassed out and they were just slapping me <laughs> and I didn't do anything about it. And I was like, I never want to feel this way again. So no. when I left, I wasn't going to come back because I was so embarrassed and I never wanted to feel that way again, but I came back because I never wanted to feel that way again. <laughs> yeah, dude, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, and so many people forget that and whether you're doing jujitsu or martial arts of any type or whether you're becoming a developer or a trader, even, you know, you got to put in those early efforts, man. Like that's what it's all about. And that is, that's no different than anything you'll do in life. I just I, I commend, you know, your your experience and, and your persistence, dude. Nobody's more persistent than you, John Kim. That's that's the truth. Like you do okay. grab a hold. Of something. Tell you why. I think um, I always call myself a simple man with a simple plan. The reason that is that because I, I, I don't have education. I don't have yeah. a high school diploma, right? So, or a college education. So the only thing that I can, I realize that I can do better than any other people is my persistence and my determination, sure. you know, and I highlight that and I, and I show that because there's so many smart people in this world that lack that in the real world physically. So, you know, you, you got to go with what you're good at. And, and I found the way to show the world what determination looks like in action. So I do not, not only like going with what you're good at, but being honest with yourself about what you're good at. Right. I mean, it was just like what you said, like you realized 
And I mean, cause a lot of people, if they were getting into fighting and then they realize like I'm getting my ass kicked and I thought I was a good fighter, they might be like, F this, you know, I'm done. I mean, cause like it sucks to be, to find out like something you've been doing at a pretty high level, maybe what you, what you thought that you're now, you're not that good. Right. So then you still have to still put in even more effort, hoping you can catch up to these guys who are younger than you, as you noted. But yeah, man, though, I think it speaks a lot to your character and how bold you are in what you love. Uh, it's, it's very unique, uh, uh, John. And that's not just in crypto. That's in the whole world. So, um, and I look, I, I know your time is precious, dude. I know you got a lot of things to do, including protecting Charlie. So we don't want to leave that, that, that gap up too much, but you know, I do my quick fire at the end of each thing, but what did I miss? Anything that I might have not touched based on before we get fun, get started and have a little bit of fun. There's two things that I want to say before we get to the rapid fire. Let's go. One is for your uh, your your viewers because we talked about crypto. I want to tell you the last time I got in a fight. It's kind of a fun story. Okay. So my sister, I don't want to say her name. Sure. Broke up with her boyfriend. Boyfriend treated her like crap. So she she was depressed. She called me out to a, to a bar. I went out. It was during Christmas, and I was drinking with her. And this guy walks in. Mm. Her ex-boyfriend literally walks into the same bar that me and my sister's in. So I walk up to him and I just slap him like really hard. I mean, if I, but when I slap people, it literally feels like you got punched, right? So I yeah, slapped yeah, yeah. him and my sister threw wine in his face. Got him. And so, so he's hiding behind the bouncer because he's scared, right? Yep. And he's telling me to come outside. I said, okay, meet me outside. So I go outside. He sent his friend that's like six foot one. Big guy. I'm, I'm five nine, five ten. Sends him out. And, and he's like, you don't want to do this. I'm like, Hey, if somebody treated your sister that way, you, wouldn't you stand up for her? And shocked me. This guy punched me like wow. right here. He punched me and he hit me right here. And then there were a whole bunch of bouncers outside and a lot of people. And I said, this is what I said. Okay. Everyone, you guys just saw this guy punch me. What I'm about to do now <laughs> is sell. Defense, because I have some record. I have some, I have some uh, violence record, so I didn't want to go to jail. Sure, 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 sure. And what I'm about to do is self-defense. So I took off my jacket, put it onto the rail, and I said, "Remember, this is self-defense." Yeah. And then I walked up, I kicked, I, I low kicked him, and he put his hands down. I hit him in his mouth, picked him up, threw him on the ground, put him in a rear naked, got him, put him to sleep, and I walked away within 30 seconds. And, and, and one of the bouncers said, that mother, that mother, there's some UFC shit on that <laughs> So Little did you know. Uh, uh, walked away and drove off. The moral of the story is, if you're a regular person in the street and, and, and you go against a trained fighter at any level, yep. it will be over in 30 seconds, whether you like it or not. So I thought that was a pretty fun story. And no, that's great. Keep and going. the last thing I will say is this. I don't want to, this is not anything religious, but I want to be able to say this. This is something Speak that really, I want. Yeah. Really. So this is what I think of Bitcoin and Litecoin. Bitcoin and Litecoin is the way, the truth, and the light. And let me explain. It's a way for all people from all races and status to be set free from the banks and financial institutions that get you in debt and keep you in debt. It's the truth through code and math that exposes the corruption and the manipulation of the greedy, fallible human beings who can and will use their centralized financial system and power to abuse the general population. It's the light of hope in the midst of darkness and despair that illuminates another path for the people to take back their sovereignty and leave a lasting legacy and freedom to the future generation. That's what I believe Litecoin and Bitcoin is. Well said, man. Well said. And I know you'd be a man of faith yourself as, as you know, I am. And so, you know, obviously not to interject, you know, too much of one or the other, but you see this, I know you see this as a helping hand to these people who have been, you know, bound by these chains of the, the, the slavery as you, as you, uh, uh, noted earlier about, you know, with, with being in debt and you are, you know, when you get put in that situation, when you have to take money out, you know, you're not getting any richer paying somebody something when you, you probably didn't have, you take out a loan to pay something. You don't have that money in your bank chilling to pay your loan back, right? Now you got to make it work with even less money because 
it, it just sucks. You know, I love what, I love what you stand for, man. I love what like, like when Found- foundation is doing, I love what your relationship is with the crypto community and what you become in the crypto community speaks wonders about how anybody can make it with anything, whether you're a developer, whether you're a, a badass dude who can whip somebody's ass, whether you're, you're, you're somebody who just loves the space. There's something for everybody. I mean, I'm just a talker, right? Like, I'm just a talker, John. I mean, I just love what I do. It's just so much fun to me. And you're just a fighter. And you loved what you've done to at least a large enough extent to prove that you could do that for Charlie. You never had to, which is yeah. beautiful. Yeah. I got to use my craft every day. You just get to use the presumed ability to use your craft. You might be fooling everybody either, by the way. <laughs> I mean, I can make up some stories too. Obviously, I, I trust you. But, I don't want my ass whipped, so I'm not coming at you yet. No, but I always say true inspiration is not telling people how to become like you. Is making it so easy that they can do what you do. There you go. So, so I, I'll just leave it at that. That's great. All right. Now you're ready for some fun? I'm down. Let's okay. go, baby. Let's go. Let's go. All right. So I do this at the end of each podcast, you know, and I like to like make everybody a little bit more human, you know. So I ask a few questions, you know, feel free to pass. If you don't like a question, if you don't like it, if you don't like my response, that's fine too. We're here as friends. We're here to have fun. Feel free to answer as you would like. I would like to, I mean, not that, no, am I, here we go. Let's go. All right. Number one question. Favorite movie of all time. You can choose to. Choose you have to. to. If you have to. Oh, man. It has to be Rocky Four because Rocky I was, Four. It, it pumps me every time I watch it to train, you know? Okay. Okay. I, I, dude, I feel that. All right. What, like, what is it about Rocky Four that, that speaks to you so much? Underdog going against something invincible. Well, what about Rocky One? I know, but but this one was different, right? It was a guy who was on steroids, who was doing everything, cutting right. yeah. and, yep. and doing it the wrong way, and he just go out and does it organically and does it completely different than what he does. Locks himself in a cabin and just works out, right? right? Exactly. I, 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 feel you. Yeah. I feel you. No, I have no problem with that answer, but that's the first Rocky question or Rocky answer I've gotten in really? all 40 podcasts or so. You can tell I'm a sports guy, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm, a, I'm a sports guy too, and so that's my next question. Any, are there any sports outside of – you know the the martial arts scene that you follow. I was I was all in on football in high school. Okay, so football is my my next. What's my? You still you still watch it? I don't anymore. Okay, because I was going to ask a, you if you're a Cowboys fan because I'm a Saints I was, fan. I was a I was a dead hardcore Cowboys fan. But it's over with. But I stopped watching TV 2009. I like all together, like no matter what. Yeah. What if Charlie Lee was talking to the whole world on TV? No, like I watch sometimes, but I, okay, I'm, cool. never, I'm never like watching TV or have a cable subscription or stuff Netflix. like that. You know, what about Netflix? Yeah, I, I, ne- I watch Netflix sometimes. Okay, okay, fair enough. All right, so favorite TV show then? Oh, I'm gonna take it back to old school. Um, Family Ties. Okay, hey, dude, that's classic. I mean, yeah. I grew up. I think wasn't. It, I think they were showing yeah. that on TBS back yeah, in the day. That was, when, that, that was when shows were wholesome. At wholesome. Yeah. It was funny, but at the same time, I learned the value of family and relationship and, 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 you know, just like building each other up and stuff like that. So for so sure, cool. man, yeah, dude, I'm like awesome. back in the day, dude, like everything from like, you know, Nick at night, right. And Snick and, you know, are you afraid of the dark? I mean, even those were so, they're so basic. And then you got, you got a little bit older, you got saved by the bell, you got family oh, matters, yeah. right? you growing <laughs> pains, right? I mean, those are some classics, dude. Right. Anyways. All right. <laughs> So the next question, a little bit, a uh, little bit more advanced than, you know, favorites here, but all right. So humans been around roughly, you know, according to science, 250,000 years, whatever it might be of that 250,000 years, the, the earth has actually been around technically around, you know, this is scientifically spoken at least uh, around 4 billion years. Okay. So in this time period, do you believe that aliens and extraterrestrials have ever visited planet earth while humans, according to science have been around? Have humans interacted with extraterrestrials? I think aliens do exist, but but um, I, I don't think they've ever contacted a human. Fair, uh, fair. Yeah. I mean, and you know, there's a lot of different things that you can like tie into this. And I mean, I personally believe that there's no way to know. I mean, like, there's just none, yeah. and it's just fun to think about, right? Yeah. And I have my own personal beliefs that can be interpreted a certain way where, you know, extraterrestrials are those angels, right? Are, yeah. those, are, are those, are those demons? Are those, I mean, are these things that interacting with non-human entities I'm that are people, right? Are, I'm saying right? aliens are demons and angels and what you see in the Bible. Sometimes. Sure, sure, sure. All right. So next question, Bitcoin, 
as a political party or even Litecoin as a political party. I mean, not necessarily against each other, but, you know, Bitcoin as a political party is the question. Libertarian? Bitcoin. What do you mean? I'm not understanding the question. I mean, it, that's it's it's pretty broad. Like Bitcoin as a political party, yes or no? No. No. Why not? I mean, it's it's, it's not political. Fair. A, a great answer. There is no right or wrong. By the way, I, I also it's coming yeah. against everything that is political. It's coming against the establishment. It's coming against sure. anything that is organized and 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 has some have some face to it's represent. Yeah. yeah, it's a good hey, good points, man. <laughs> um, not to not to play devil's advocate. My rebuttal though would be because I don't. I mean, I don't say yes or no on that question. Like I can lean on both sides. What you said is absolutely fact, right? I like to think Bitcoin as a political party could mean, you know, as this movement starts, you know, catching on, right? And you can already see like the youth and Andrew Yang and his ability to kind of see the future. I mean, I traditionally lean conservative, especially fiscally, right? Uh -huh. which makes Bitcoin much easier for me to grasp a hold of and really believe in, I think. But a lot of people don't even have the ability to not understand what printing money means. Like I use the example of what, John, what if the United States of America, when they decided to become a country, only printed $21 million? How, and that's it. That, they, they cut off the printing machine and they could never exist again. What would that $1 be worth today in this whole entire country, right? And people can't even conceptualize what that actually would have done for the U.S. dollar, right? Yeah. I mean, it would have been epically important. And a one dollar would be worth like four hundred thousand, eight hundred thousand dollars today. I mean, I've heard two different numbers, you know. But when you present it that way, like people need to be, they, we need representation for people to think that way, right? Yeah. So do, do we leave it up to the Republicans and Democrats in the United States to handle that, or do we actually start? you know, third party in this and start bringing up some, you know, some really good, um, caring individuals, you know, I don't know. So that's my, that's usually my, uh, my response back to what that actually means to me. Fair. I, All right. I, I think in the future, um, something that has value will ultimately, because when you, when you don't have to announce a fire, right? When, when, when crap hits the fan, and they realized that oh, yeah. the only sound money left with a deflationary currency is Bitcoin and Litecoin. I think a lot of people will recognize, but it'll be a little bit late, but they will recognize that. that it's, so it's so this, this is a perfect le entry into my next question. Bitcoin to a million dollars. When? Bitcoin. Could it be a million dollars? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. And, you know, I like to say, I hope it doesn't because you know what that means? That what? everything else has drastically fallen apart. Like it's gotten that bad where Bitcoin or Litecoin, again, obviously this this is my first interview having to ask these questions to to really someone who is affiliated with the second tier of this, right? You know, Bitcoin's first, Litecoin's second, in my opinion. Um, I I just, I look forward to it going up, but a million dollars kind of scares me. Does it scare you though? Yeah, it scares me because that means something just hit the fan. Yeah, yeah. So enter Litecoin, where there you go. People will keep uh, Bitcoin as a store of value, and Litecoin can be used as store of value and a medium of exchange that people can trust. I mean, really, Litecoin has the most to gain out of all this when I really think about it, because Bitcoin will start being hoarded and already is to in a, on, on on some level, but we're still like one one to five percent adoption and on actual use case, right? And that's probably a huge exaggeration. It's probably really under one percent. You know, since two thousand eleven, every year there was the same fud about how Litecoin was going to go away, and we had we had a hundred thousand funerals for Bitcoin as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every year is the same FUD that's repackaged. Yep. It's always saying, but here's the truth. When it goes, Litecoin always outperforms Bitcoin in percentage rise. Absolutely. And it has. It has. Yeah. No, all right. Well, well said. Okay. So we'll wind it down here. A couple more. All right. Um, you can't choose anybody from the Litecoin or Litecoin Foundation teams. Okay. Litecoin teams or so. Outside of Litecoin Foundation and the Litecoin team itself and developers, including Charlie, obviously, who has been like your kind of like your hero in the space? And that doesn't necessarily have to be like inside the space, but what's been a really who's been a big motivator for you? Andreas Antonopoulos by far. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I would say he's above Charlie 
in, in, my, wow. in my book because I didn't meet Charlie until later. But when I first got into space, Antonopoulos was the person that I fell asleep listening to to make sure that I'm understanding oh, the, 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 how big this uh, Bitcoin thing is. So I think and I talk, I actually uh, we, we, we had a little message, uh, private message going back and forth uh, today. Uh, me you and, and AA? Yeah, me and Andreas. Yeah. Tell us what's up, man. See if he wants to hang out on Bitcoin Radio sometime. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm, I think, hey. I think you're going to see Charlie on on one of his shows. So. That would be amazing, and I can't wait because that's a really uh, that those are two brilliant minds. I would love to see you know how they feel about one another. Okay, so uh, I say last question. It's really not because there's one more after this. But as crypto goes, are you happy? with where we are today or are you disappointed as far as where we are today and that just means everything like are you like looking at where we are compared to where we've been and be like yeah we're we're, we're making progress i mean this is good or are you like disappointed that we're not there yet where are you where do you feel you know in hebrew the word coincidence doesn't exist i just mm -hmm. believe that we're in this we're in the right place at the right time but one thing i, I do not like is the sentiment of the bitcoin maximalists and their spirit behind what they are talking about putting down other people. So that's the only thing that I'm worried about. But overall, I just feel like I'm in this space for a reason and everything is happening for a reason in the perfect time. Sure. And I, and I second that. Um, I consider myself a semi maximalist, meaning Bitcoin needs to always be around. And yeah. Bitcoin solidifies and gives credibility to the space. Yes. But it is not in any way necessary to be the only. And the the majority of people in this space will absolutely crush the maximalists at some point because they got in, they got enough to be maximalists, right? But nobody else does. And so you'll lose that to popular opinion. I mean, that's ridiculous. I I, I love having those conversations with actual maximalists, though. You know, it's yeah. Ridiculous. Okay. All right. Last question. Now, here's the real last one. Are you ready for this? I'm about, I'm about, I'm about to mess you up, bro. All right. Mess me up. All right. So, if you were stuck on an island and you only had the ability to bring five cryptocurrencies with you uh -huh. and you could only utilize those five cryptocurrencies to do specific things, okay? Is there enough? I don't need to know what they are. Is there enough cryptocurrencies for you to survive a deserted island with just an internet connection to get your stuff what you need and you have unlimited money right for mm -hmm. the most part like let's let's be realistic here you can't go spend a billion dollars right yeah i mean let's stay within like reasonable market caps is there enough specific cryptocurrencies on earth right now that could allow you to survive you're, you're asking me if there's five cryptocurrencies that i that you can only bring five with you yeah could you make it happen i think so i mean you know, I know this is a really broad question. I like people just kind of run with it. Um, I've been saving this question for the right person. And you, you have a very, you have a very abstract mind, right? So let me ask you, how do you get your water, fresh water? You don't have any water. It's a deserted island, right? Uh -huh. What would you use to get your water? How would you get it there? I mean, dude, this, there's no wrong answer. Like if you want to pay Charlie Lee to, to take helicopter lessons and then for him to fly over with Litecoin and drop off some water, that's cool, right? <laughs> Oh man, this is pretty crazy. You know what? I think I think if you say it that way, I'll just need Bitcoin and Litecoin. There's no reason for any other coin to exist because if if I can call somebody to pay somebody to fly over to bring me water or whatever and survive, all I would need is a uh, uh, sound money. Okay, fair. So okay, let me, let me change the question. All you can have is is bitcoin or and or litecoin either one's fine could you survive for the rest of your life by yourself on a deserted island with only using cryptocurrency with the internet connection yeah but it, it would be a very lonely life yes it would i'm not i'm not hoping that for you yes yeah, so I, I don't think that would be ideal but if i had to yeah definitely <laughs> I mean, I guess in this circumstance, I mean, I got to I got to rethink the way I ask this question, though, because I mean, I got to make it like desirable, at least to some extent. You know, I don't need I don't need these these peanut gallery comments coming out from, oh, why would he need this? Why wouldn't you get that? What would you buy first besides food and water? Except for food and water? What? I mean, what? what I mean, like what maybe you want to maybe you want a, a MacBook so you can watch your Netflix. I don't know. What do you what, what, what would you bring for, with you first? You buy yourself now. Yeah. Watch I would, ASIC yeah. miners. That would be cool. I would I would definitely have 
a, a, a MacBook. I wouldn't need a, a good weight set. Fair enough. A, a heavy Fair bag or, or, or something that I can pass my time doing. What Fishing. You can always fish. Fish, yeah. But it gets boring after a while. So I, 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 yeah. I, I relieve my stress through workout. So I, I wouldn't need some equipment over there. All right, Bitcoin Radio. I'm going to let this man go because I'm really digging deep thing. now. Last go ahead. Thing. Whatever you, know, you want. Last thing, I'm going to give you one last thing. Go. Cornerstone Global mgt.com is the is the company that me and david schwartz of the uh, litecoin foundation we created please go and check it out it's you get to choose a portion of your pay uh in crypto whether it's one percent two percent three percent ten percent every time you get a paycheck you sign up then what we do we make sure that however many percent that you choose it goes into your bank account i love this in, in, in your crypto wallet as 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 Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Ethereum. And the reason that's so important is because dollar cost averaging is the best way to get into crypto because it- 100,000%. Yeah, so it removes all the emotions. So we do all the buying at the best prices for you and we put it in a cold storage wallet or you can click a button and put it up into Celsius uh, network and you can gain five to 12% interest on your Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Ethereum. So um, it's- it, I mean, just that interest alone. I mean, what bank is going to give you any percentage to have money in their system, right? So, um, Cornerstone Global MGT.com on Twitter is Cornerstone GLO2. And, um, check it out. Um, hey, I, I'd like to have you and David on at the same time to explain this more in depth. Okay. Let's do it. I mean, like, this is, this is how you do, this is how you make crypto easier to own, right? You just make it easy to own. Stupid. I mean, like it's that simple. Stupid easy because people are Stupid not easy. ready for complex things. No, and then not only that to to offer incentives and partner with someone. And I, I'm a big fan of Alex Mashinsky and Celsius and what they're doing over there. Uh, and couple that with you know simplicity, the ability to be profitable and put your hand put your put your money in the hands of 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 you know, really, you know, the future, that's what this is. So I think that's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Where can they find you at John plug, plug yourself at John Kim 77, no underscore, just at John Kim 77. I have a lot of fake accounts out there on Twitter, John Kim official.com website and John Kim official on Instagram and YouTube. Check me yeah. out. That's what's up, bro. All right. Did you have fun? Did you have fun? I had so much fun, bro. So much. always dude, where are you going to be at next? Where can I find you? I don't know. I never plan. Uh, fair enough. All right. Well, let me know when you do plan um, or, or when the plans come together. You'll see uh, it on Twitter. <laughs> after I will. All right. Okay. Bitcoin Radio. Thanks again, uh, John Kim. Thanks to Litecoin Foundation. I had a wonderful time. WCC. Big shout out to everybody involved with the Vegas Blockchain Week. You know, Litecoin, Summit, Coin Agenda, EOS. Everybody was doing their thing. I was so proud of everybody. John, what was your favorite thing about the week? You. That a boy. Good answer. Didn't even have to practice that. See you soon, Bitcoin Radio.